why don't we just why don't we just kick off and, and freestyle this without the um the admirable leadership <laughs> of um of Rick. okay yeah it looks like uh twitter spaces is um having a few more issues than normal today so we're going to punt and uh rick will join have you join when you uh, when you can but for now uh chris why don't you give us a little introduction for the call and then we'll go through the some agenda items yeah f- fa- fantastic thanks fred so i'm um, really excited to um uh, pretend to be the leader of the community call today um uh so there's a whole bunch of things to talk about um, and normally with these community calls we go through um uh, a, a range of things and i know fred on the agenda um there's a whole bunch of things from the uh interop updates including Denver. I know that on the agenda, there's also um, some. Uh, uh, Roland will be giving us some updates about the vaults as well. But one of the obviously most important things, and I'm glad that Yusuf is also on the call today, and hopefully we can get him up as a speaker too, is um, to to really debrief and talk about the um, what occurred with um, after the um, collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank um, and the attendant um, depegging of USDC um, against the US dollar um, and the implications that that had for IST um, and the implications that um, that that event has for the way that um, the Economic Committee has been, um, obviously how we responded, but, al- but also how the Economic Committee is thinking about the role of um, stable coins, fiat back stable coins, um, uh, it, for IST and, um, and and a path going forward as well. So really keen to talk about that, um, uh, ideally once Yusuf gets on board. Um, uh, in that absence, uh, why, don't, why don't I hand over to you, Fred? Um, you're on the list of the next to speak with the summary of updates from IST and we'll, we'll move through those and, yeah. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Chris. So, yeah, I'll talk to for a couple of minutes, but uh, as you said, ever, everyone's going to be more excited about vaults and the, uh, uh, the talk that you and, and uh, Yusuf are going to talk about. But there's been a lot of things that have happened over the last month, and this is a monthly community call, so let's just give a, a quick update. And uh, you, you're up here, Yusuf is up here, Rick, we're trying to get up here, but it doesn't mean that we're, that we're the only people that should be up here speaking. So for future events, if you would like to co-host or ask questions, please tweet or talk to us on Discord or Discourse, and happy to have you up here to involve you in the community as well. So let's talk about a quick summary of what happened with Inner Protocol in the last month. There was a, a few things that happened on, on Twitter that were pretty interesting. We ran a AI art contest on Twitter. What does that mean? So using the uh, prompts into some of the AI art programs, come up with some interesting visuals of inner protocol. So if you're, you've been following that AI space at all, check out the, the contest entries and winners for the, the Twitter contest that happened there. Uh, another Twitter item that happened was we held a, a Twitter space with uh, and we joined the Into the Yumiverse. Uh, this is because we IST was recently listed on Yumi as uh, on the lending platform Yumi as one of the collaterals that can be borrowed and lent against. So uh, we joined the in, Into the Yumiverse. So that's a, a, always a good one when you when you have a uh, the the Agoric team on that one. Uh, another uh, tweet that you might have seen is IST will be coming to the Say network as the first Cosmos naval, native stable coin. So what's interesting here is that the Say network is part of the Cosmos network, and so uh, IST is readily available uh, to them. And their test net is having uh, a lot of other apps as uh, testers as beta testers on it. And so they're testing everything from perps to NFTs to DEXs and I see what will be available as a native stable token to use in all of those uh, environments. And, and there's, there's even some contests that they're running. So uh, look, look out for how to obtain IST via their test net to, uh, to play with it. Uh, 
another thing on the uh, Agoric test net that the, the uh, vaults is coming and there was applications open to beta test the vaults. They're closed now, but um, look for that as it starts to get rolled out a little bit more broadly, have n more opportunities to uh, see what's going on with vaults, get familiar with it, and then start playing with it. Uh, last little item I wanted to throw out there before we talk about interop is uh, if you don't know, DCF is hiring for a grants program manager. So if you have experience running grants and uh, are interested in expanding that into the crypto space or if you have experience in that space already, let us know. <clears throat> Let's see if we can start expanding the, uh, the DCF team as well. As far as interop goes, uh, it was held at the first two days uh, in the uh, main ETH Denver. There was a, a build section of uh, ETH Denver that happened first, and then there was some, some presentations and conferences. The interop event is all about interoperability, not specifically Cosmos, and had 1,300 attendees, so it was pretty good size. We did hold a Cosmos Peak event, <clears throat> gave away some cool swag that, again, the community came forward and did the design for, which was really great to see all the participation from you guys out there. Uh, and <clears throat> there was a, a nice panel that uh, Dean was on, Dean Trouble from Agoric. Uh, and if you missed it, <clears throat> you, uh, you also missed a, a lot of uh, getting sick. A lot of people... I uh, got sick in uh, uh, Denver, but you can watch the videos online, and so uh, you can see the events without having to go through the the, the little chilly weather that was in uh, Denver. We're a little bit behind schedule, so I'm not going to uh, pause too long here and turn it over to Roland to give us the, the vaults update. It's probably one of the more interesting things we need to talk about today. So, Roland, tell us, where where are we? Thanks, Fred. Uh, hey, everybody. So uh, as you likely know, if you've been joining these community calls, uh, the vaults contracts have been in testnet uh, for a little while now, but we have been waiting on liquidation. And so liquidation is now this week entering testnet. I'm actually, if I pop over to Slack, I'm sort of seeing the first end to end uh, test sort of happening right now. Uh, we, we still have some functionality that will come in over the next week or two, and we need to heavily test that. As you might expect with a Vaults protocol, uh, the successful liquidation really is the most important part. Um, as a reminder, our liquidation model is uh, a Dutch auction or a descending clock auction for collateral that got liquidated, which means that sort of similar to MakerDAO or, or a few other Vault protocols, uh, we'll be looking for third-party bidders. Uh, so that's something that, that we're, we're testing on our end, but we're definitely keen to speak to anybody in the community that has done liquidations on other protocols in the past and is sort of familiar with how you do that programmatically as um, when we launch, it'll be sort of CLI-focused first uh, before there's a front end. Um, I think for, for those of you that are interested in participating in liquidation bidding uh, down the road and, and maybe are a little less technically capable, we will have a front end available. And uh, there's a model that some folks have, have likely seen from Kujira and other places where you can place a bid at a uh, percent discount to the current Oracle price. Uh, we will have that in place as well. So uh, if you're someone that just would like to park some IST and be able to accumulate assets at a discount when you buy them over time, uh, that's something that we hope will be attractive to people in the community. So um, not sure we've really spoken about that publicly before. So maybe that's a little bit of an alpha drop. Um, so that that's all coming, getting tested over the next several weeks. Uh, in addition to our sort of normal performance, functional UX testing, we also are, go are going to be putting that through a little bit more of an economic testing uh, model as well, where we're going to attempt some agent-based simulations. We're going to attempt to run... Um, uh, sort of a price declines like you've seen in the market over the over the past year uh, and make sure that that liquidation holds up so uh, that's all sort of moving forward and we're we're really excited to see everything come together as an end to end there um, we also will have an update on security reviews so once once we are 
code complete and sort of relatively confident that we aren't going to see changes in, in the code, uh, security reviews and audits will get started, uh, will get scheduled for, for those contracts. Um, Okay, so I, I think that's that's largely it. Uh, really, it is just the the progression of all these contracts. So, as a reminder, the the vaults release on the contract side includes vaults, which has a bunch of contracts that sort of work in concert to to produce and manage vaults. Uh, it has the liquidation contracts, which include an auctioneer and, and bidding. Um, it has the reserve contract. It has a contract to manage oracles. Uh, so all of that is sort of coming together all at the same time. Uh, and just excited to, to see this come together uh, for the next co uh, community call. I hope to have uh, a lot of detailed updates about our liquidation testing. So uh, excited for that. So I'll turn it back to you, Fred. Great. Thanks for that. It's uh, exciting to finally uh, have some of this uh, come together uh, after uh, all the thoughtful work that's been done on it. And um, the, Concept of vault and getting it out there will alleviate the need for the PSM as the only minting mechanism. And <clears throat> Chris is going to talk to us a little bit about, well, what uh, what's what's going on, what's uh, kind of happened, <laughs> what, uh, where where we are now, and um, represent kind of the EC. We were going to have a couple other people up there, but it doesn't look like that's uh, going to happen from a technical standpoint with Twitter Spaces today. So. Uh, Chris, uh, you and I are going to have a little conversation now, and um, I'm not going to start with general questions. I'm going to kind of get a little bit more specific and focus on the facts around inner protocol and, and things like that. Is that okay? Yeah, no, that, that sounds great. I'm, I'm not an expert in economic. Exactly. So uh, uh, I noticed that the Economic Committee uh, re reacted uh, uh, pretty quickly, but what was the first sign of concern? Where did you really s start seeing uh, you as the economic committee. Yeah, look, I mean, so so obviously we've been tracking, um, uh, like everybody else in the space, we've been tracking what 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 has been happening in the markets more generally. But um, like I think most of us, um, uh, the 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 sudden collapse of the or sudden run of the bank, and the implication that that had for USDC particularly was uh, very surprise uh, was a real surprise I'm very pleased that the economic committee was able to um, uh, to both get together or, or coordinate and then get together within just a couple of hours of the um, depegging of USDC um, but but of course by that stage arbitrages had already managed to respond to that depegging um, the the upshot is that that when we were able to see that this had implications of US uh, for, for IST, the USDC um, uh, vault had actually hadn't hadn't been filled, but but a lot of people had traded out of USDT tether and into USDC on the parity stability module that we have with IST. So we were sitting on a big big bank of USDC and as a result the price of IST was was tracking with the USDC price which as we all know went down um, for a very short amount of time below below even 90 cents um, so we were able we were obviously able to track that um, uh, but the question then became well you know so what are we going to do yeah I thought it was very interesting that the PSM kind of operated the way it was uh, supposed to which was to allow arbitrage to um, be parity with the assets that are backing it, which in this case, uh, as you said, kind of became USDC quite quickly. And so what was the reaction that the, the EC had when you started to see some changes like, like that? Yeah, of course. I mean, so, so you, you, one of the things that we want to make sure that the EC, and we don't want to, you know, this is the first, we, we are setting precedents here, we hope, and we don't want to be excessively reactive and we don't want to move faster than information allows us to move um, because you can do a lot of damage um, uh, or, or you, you can you, you can harm the reputation of a, a, a project by by reacting overly quickly. So we, we did want to make sure that we got got information before we did any significant made um, uh, you know now there's only so many things that the EC has the ability to do. So the EC, uh, at the, while we're in the 
parity stability module only stage, um, we can uh, set minting limits for individual um, uh, collateral types in the PSM, and we can set fees. Um, uh, that's really the only capacity that the, the EC has to respond to, to anything, good or bad. Um, the decision with the, um, the EC made um, just a couple of hours after the depegging was to um, basically hold the line. So um, we voted to reduce the um, minting limits on USDC to just at where they had the, the total sum had been minted already. So there's approximately, or at that stage, there was approximately a million dollars of USDC through the Axelar Bridge and a million dollars worth of uh, USDC or, or a million IST, I should say, a million IST through the, um, uh, through the Gravity Bridge. And we voted to hold it at that under the justification that um, uh, we didn't want there to be further minting above where we were. But it was also very important because IST is used through the inter uh, through the interchain economic community we wanted ist to still be available and be available as a resource for the community if it needed it it's being used on lots of different chains as we know and as as, as fred as you you've detailed um throughout these community calls we wanted to make sure that it was still still um available for use and so that was the decision we made we met a couple of times over the course of the weekend to 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 continue to discuss possible options um but that's that's where we that's where we land yeah and 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 i'm, I'm glad that's where we did as well I, I think that ultimately ended up being the, the right decision yeah hindsight is always 2020 but it's it's great when you're 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 validated for what what uh, you're working on but but you're right 90 percent of ist has always been pretty much uh, on, out on the chain and ibc land and so uh that that is something to always take into account and it's really amazing how uh, how well that worked so different chains deal with governance different ways and uh there's not a lot of chains that have this on-chain governance from an economic committee that that works this way how did that mechanism work for the economic committee to to make these changes oh look it, it was very effective um i i think the uh, the, the 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 infrastructure that's been built up to support the economic committee, so that these decisions can be made, is actually a very effective and efficient infrastructure. Um, the the challenge with all of these things is that the economic committee is a is a is a collection of humans. So we 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 the coordination. Once you've got those tools and technologies, the coordination becomes a human coordination challenge, much more than much more than a technical yeah problem. back to the uh, that's clock. particularly the case Big back, yes, back to the clocks we were talking about at the beginning of the, uh, the yeah exactly i mean because it's it, oh, and 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 that's not a problem and that's certainly not a problem in um uh in a in a fast reaction and and part of the reason that i think that the community was happy with the 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 um the the nominations for the economic committee is because it's globally spread so that we do have 24 hour a 24 hour watch um, uh, uh, across the planet, um, uh, but it's also really important, I think, for us to 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 be able to consider significant policy decisions with space and time, so that you can make emergency calls, and the and the infrastructure is there and really effective for us to make emergency calls when and if necessary. But but again, we 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 need to, and I think I think the community would expect us to be making decisions carefully in the light of as much information as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was uh, surprising for most people that USDC had a problem and that it, it didn't really deal with uh, censorship, which is, is something that's been brought up as a USDC problem or a potential problem in the, future, in the, the past. Uh, but uh, a lot of things did work well. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what you felt uh, from the 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 inner protocol as a whole that did work well in here and uh, didn't have uh, issues during this event oh I, I, absolutely so um I, look a lot of things worked really well and a lot of things worked exactly as we had predicted so 
look, it wasn't great that everybody was trading out of USDT to USDC, but that was that that's how the the, the PSM is designed, and that was actually an opportunity for people in the interchain to make that arbitrage trade and 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 very effectively, and, and it seems to have worked really well on on the inter protocol infrastructure. Um, I, I was very pleased, and and I was worried that you know there are unpredictable things that could happen with um, uh, when you have events like this. Like, well, what what does this mean for the bridges? What does this mean? For um, you know the dexes across the interchain ecosystem, what does this mean for DeFi generally? Given how important USDC is to to DeFi, and it seems like not just in the interchain but also across across the blockchain ecosystems um, that that things things seem to have have held up really really well. Um, not not just not just um, into protocol, but but in fact across the economy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I. Is some of the the um, the chains are more directly af in uh, affected by uh, USDC. I think had more issues. Uh, it seems like uh, specifically Inner Protocol really actually just did what it was supposed to do. Uh, but was there any room for uh, improvement? You, the, you, you, hindsight is twenty twenty. We did we saw a lot of good things, but uh, you always learn something from these events. You know, failure is just a, an opportunity. Oh, look, I mean. We, we we, we, we've learned we've learned a lot, and obviously, I'm 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 dwelling on human factors because I think that's actually a really interesting thing when you've got a when you've got a risk committee and economic committee like us. But but look, I mean, what what have we learned? Um, uh, we've learned how excited we are for vaults, <laughs> um, uh, and 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 it's really exciting to see and and to hear from Roland about the progress towards the vaults. If this had happened when there were vaults, the range of choices. Would have been would have been much larger. The menu of alternatives um, would have been much larger, but but it would also have still been quite difficult. And we've seen with similar, like so, for example, MakerDAO's DAI has vaults and has what they call a peg stability module, which operates very similarly to ours. Um, but they also lost the peg as well. Um, and I think there's a lot of conversation going on. I know in the inter protocol community. I know in the, I definitely know in the maker DAO community about whether peg stability modules as they have come to be designed are exactly as they should be designed. I think it's really important to have them because they provide a degree of stability to the protocol in normal times that you don't normally get. But that doesn't mean that we're in the end of history for PSMs or for stable token design. I think I think we've got an opportunity to think about think very sophisticated and, and and that's what i'm hoping that the community can engage on about you know so what is the what are the long-term implications of this this depegging look like because you know as you say well a, a lot of people had assumed that the risk from usdc was censorship that usdt was the one that was more likely to be um uh less stable but obviously what we've seen is that you know the crypto economy can be susceptible to bank runs which is you know very traditional. <laughs> yeah. Uh, remember 311. Yeah, as, uh, as Dean says. So, uh, <laughs> the, yeah. remember, remember. The, um, uh, you mentioned long term. So, I think that that's really a, an interesting point about inner protocol. A lot of different chains and protocols and, and stuff uh, can be reactionary, and some have longer term views. But it, uh, I really feel that. Uh, the long-term vision is really the most important vision for a lot of what inner protocol is. Uh, this comes up uh, often about well, when vaults, what is the first asset? And uh, I think that the, uh, as been said before, what's the long-term vision? So uh, I would expect there's not going to be much of a rush to announce that uh, in advance, but can you tell us a little bit about what the process is uh, as vaults start to come to fruition and everyone starts to get excited about them being released? Yeah, of course. So this is this is obviously, this is what we're most excited about and this is what we're thinking the most about right now. Um, so uh, it, it, we expect that um, uh, in the short term, there will be a fairly limited number of collateral uh, early on because we want to we run, uh, uh, the economic committee's view, generally speaking, um, is that we want to make sure 
that everything is working really well before we bring on a, a very large range of assets. So we expect a small number, say, you know, Adam is an obvious one, one to begin with, but, you know, maybe, maybe there'll be certain, some others as well. More importantly, though, um, we're building out right now the, uh, uh, a proposal for a collateral onboarding process that all that will we will be submitting to the builder DAO for its views and for feedback and so forth. But we want a collateral onboarding process so that anyone with any collateral type can can um, propose their 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 preferred token. Um, we can run it through independent analysis. Um, uh, the economic committee can make some recommendations about. Um, uh, about the viability of that. But of course, the Builder DAO itself is the final decision maker on, um, on, on, on what collateral types should be used in, in into protocol. We're going to come up with some proposals about what that process would be for feedback um, and for the Builder DAO ultimately to endorse. So that's, that's where we are with that. That, that is being timed. In fact, I, I'm literally going to be turning my mind to that after this call. Um, uh, but, but we want to make sure that that is timed so that it's ready to roll by the time that vaults are live so that we haven't got much of a delay or anything and so that, so that the true potential of Interprotocol can be really seen live into the world. Exciting. I know for those of us spent uh, years on this, it's, uh, it's really... A... <laughs> <laughs> it's, incredibly, it's incredibly exciting and just such a weird, such a weird thing, so close to vaults. Yeah for this incredible market thing to have occurred. Um, but I think, I think it's really, it, 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 it has tested some assumptions about the role of stable tokens. Um, and, in, and it's been, been, you know, it's been stressful, but it's been very useful. Right. Yeah. Uh, as you said, it's, it's, it's a coincidence. It's, it's so close together because uh, I heard that you have an upcoming economic committee retreat that you'll be discussing some of these types of processes in uh, just at the end of this month. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> to talk about what happens if the USDC breaks its peg. Um, uh, uh, yeah. So so look look the the, the inter protocol is because we're just about to launch vaults. There's a lot of things that we need to think about as a group and that we need to share with the builder DAO and the inter protocol community more generally about risk management when we've got the full-fledged vaults because you know early in this call i described the we've got a couple of couple of parameters that we can we can um use to to manage risk on, under the psm model there's going to be a lot more with the vault system as well there's a lot of um uh, practical risk management that we need to think about and what i'm looking forward to sharing with the um uh, the interprotocol community and the builder dao is where we think that um, uh, some of those the, some of those structures um, need to be in order for you know for, for 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 this particular economic committee for economic committees down and into the future um, uh, that are that are nominated and elected by the builder DAO we're going to try to set up some systems and processes so that um, uh, the inter protocol can 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 grow and can deliver the benefits that we know that it can to the inter community. Yeah, definitely. So normally we'll open up these calls for uh, questions in chat. However, we're experiencing some Twitter Spaces problems, so we're probably going to skip that for, day, for today. Uh, please do engage us on Discord and Discourse. But I do have one final question, and if you, uh, your answer is no, I, I, can't, I don't want to comment. That's uh, the second best answer. But <laughs> if you had a magic wand, how would you mitigate this kind of risk? Uh, in the future, if this type of thing was to happen again, and you, you can be as creative as saying, "Oh, you know, it's uh, uh, outside of the, you know, we're going to peg stablecoins to, to dollars, or we're going to un, un uh, peg the dollar, wh whatever." But what, uh, what, would, how would you mitigate this in the future if you had a ma magic wand? And again, I'm putting you on the spot. So if if you, uh... well, look, look, Fred, this this is a decentralized community, so I don't get a magic wand. Maybe we all get magic wands to vote together. Um, uh, look, I, I, I think that's, in a funny way, I think that's an unknown at this stage. Um, what we saw was, um, uh, I think many in the crypto communities across, you know, lots of protocols saw this as a bit of a black swan 
event and and probably we shouldn't have done so because it is it is really a known risk so, so i think that there's going to be some really fascinating conversations about crypto economic design for stable tokens that go on over the next couple of weeks months and years and what i'm hoping is that the inter protocol can build on and advance the best of those ideas um uh you know that we're, we're not at the end of history for stable coins and and um and stable tokens so i'm i'm looking forward to us participating in and 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 ideally leading those conversations about the best way to build the most useful stable token um uh for 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 all of us that's great and we'll uh, look out to the community for those suggestions on what we can do to uh implement that magic wand and uh Get it out there with <laughs> distributed, decentralized, community-based magic wand. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I love that. Uh, so, uh, again, engage on Discord and the uh, community forum and uh, reply on Twitter. And I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up for today. We're about five minutes over, but we did get a little bit of a, a, a tough start. Sorry about that and um, Twitter spaces. But uh, any f uh, closing comments or anything, or are we ready to, to wrap it up for today? No, no, Luke, the only thing is that I, I just, on, on behalf of the Economic Committee, we cannot wait for vaults. It's really, really exciting. Um, uh, it's it's going to be a, it's, it, it is the promise of, of the Inter Protocol. So, so we, we, we can't wait. Great. Well, with that, let's go ahead and wrap it up for today. And thanks so much for, uh, joining us and, and getting grilled. I know I, I asked a lot of qu questions quickly, uh, but uh, ask some more questions from the community. You know, community, come on up and let's do more uh, next month. So with that, uh, we're all out for today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>